Hello guys, welcome to Photographics Academy. So today we are learning how to retouch and collaborate your outdoor images using Camera Raw and Photoshop. See you in the video. So let's quickly get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to reset this my, my workspace so that I can get things together. So I'm just going to reset my workspace here yeah, to have my layers and all of that here in the right places. And I'm going to open up my Retouch Academy. Yes, of course, we're going to be using that. So the first thing I will do in retouching this image is to crop it. So I'm just going to crop it using H by 10, just like that, and press enter. So after cropping it, this is what you're going to get. And I will quickly start taking care of my blemishes one by one. So let's quickly get started. I'm going to create an empty layer, pick up my Spots Healing, healing Brush tool. I don't know why I keep forgetting the name of this particular tool. My healing brush to and quickly change the sample to current and below or all layers. Let's do current and below because we're going to be introducing black and white. Then we'll do I'll pull up our black and white adjustment there, make sure it's down like this. And zoom in to make sure you are seeing your blemishes right here. Beautiful. So pick go to your editing layer, use your healing brush tool and start taking care of them. Make sure your sample is in current and below. If you do all layers is going to affect it's going to also sample from the black and white if you do just current layer it's an empty layer so there will be nothing to sample from so we are doing current and below so it will just sample from the background All right, so we are done with the blemish removal, the ones we can take care of now. So the rest will do that in frequency separation. So I'm going to delete the black and white. Make sure I match these two layers together and we'll quickly get started. So I'm going to run my thin bits frequency separation and I'll keep the radius at seven. Yeah, I'll keep the radius at eight. I think it is the best place to be for this image and press OK and pick up my mixer brush tool and quickly start painting over my image. Now, the rule of using mixer brush to do your frequency separation is that you must avoid painting your shadows into your highlight or painting your highlight into your shadows. If you do that, it's going to mix up and it's going to mess up your whole image, the structure and the profile of your image is going to change. So to avoid all of that mess, you just have to stick with the highlights and shadows. So you paint the highlights separately and paint the shadows separately. When you come to a point, for example, here, let me find a very strong intersect intersection point. Okay, so for example, you want to paint in between this shadow and the highlight. What you need to do is to take a brush size, is to take a brush size that is that when you place it just above their intersection point, half of the brush will be in the highlight and half of it will be in the shadows and just paint over it like that. It's going to still blend it in without mixing them up. And that is what we're going to be doing right now. So let's quickly get started. So I'm painting my highlight separately. So if you notice at this point, I just stayed in between my highlight and my shadows. So it might look like you're not doing anything until you do the before and after you notice that you're already making a lot of effect and to even make things a bit more uh, precise, although you may need to practice a lot to be able to use this, is to hide your frequency separation, is to hide your frequency layer, which is your texture layer, your high frequency layer rather, which is your texture layer and work with just the colors just like this. So you just rooting it out without seeing the texture and at the end of the day, you open it and you see how much you have done. You just make sure you remember not to place your highlight into your shadows. Just follow the shapes of the skin the way you are seeing it. Follow the shapes like that. So that at the end of the day, you still have something looking very close to your original uh, lightning, light, light fall off on the skin. Yeah, light fall off. Okay. 
Okay, so let's look at the overall before and after. So this is the before, this is the after, before, after, before, after. So if you look at it, you are going to see how beautifully well we've been able to blend in the highlights and the shadows in a in just a way that is still looking very realistic, but much more softer and cleaner. So the next thing we're going to do is just to make the highlight pop a little bit more. So I'm going to just click on the dust, pick up my brush and reduce it to three. I just make the highlights pop a little bit more than they are popping already. So just on the nose like this. Yeah. Just like that over here. Pop it. Pop this highlight over right here. Seeing some highlights over there as well. I'll pop that one. Pop the one within under her chin here. Under her jaw like that. Beautiful. So I'll pop the one on the forehead, very important for me. Nice. Okay, so we are done with the highlight. We are going to come over to the body, pop this one in the color bone. Pop this one over here. Notice that was under highlights here. Pop that one. Do the same with this. All right. Search for here as well. Pop the highlights here. Yeah. Make it a bit a bit more stronger. All right, nice. So pop this one. Pop this one. Beautiful. And, and. All right, so we'll quickly do the same thing for the shadows. Now I'm going to drop the shadows to one. I don't want it interfering a lot because I already have a lot of shadows in the image. Just to make this a bit more contrasty. Nice. So the idea of dodging and burning is just to add a bit more, a little bit more contrast to your image. So it doesn't necessarily need to be strong and all of that, but you could still tell there is your that your shadow your dodge and burn is doing a great job. Just to make the shadows a bit more outstanding. That is what we're trying to do right here. I think my highlights need a little bit more here. Nice. Okay, so let's check out the before and after with the bone. So just quickly, we've been able to even make this have a little bit of more contrast in them. You can duplicate this and now reduce the second one just to make it stronger without needing to go to paint the whole thing over again. So the next thing we're going to do is to clean up the eyes. I'm just going to load up my magic eyes. I'll quickly clean up the eyes. All right, so I'm just going to open this up, go down to my, go straight down to clean eyes. Make sure your flow is high. Keep it as high as you can. Sorry, that was wrong one. Then paint over the eyes, just like. All right, so the last thing I want to do around here, or the next thing I want to do, I notice that the catch light are not so outstanding. So I'm just going to go to my dodge, yeah? Because my flow is high, I can just paint over the cast light and it will take in some more highlights into that. Nice one. All right, so now you can see the cast light even when you zoom out and it's drawing your eyes into the image. So let's quickly create a stamp visible layer. Okay, I think one more thing we need to do is to fix her teeth. So I'm going to go to Magic Smile and just quickly paint over the teeth like this. Nice one. So how the teeth fix, but I think it's too much. So we'll reduce the opacity and create a stamp visible layer. Now let's start color grading our image. So I want to achieve something that has a little bit of more, a little bit of chocolate brown tone. And to achieve that, we'll first of all go to our hue and saturation and reduce the reds on the image. Just reduce the, the saturation slightly like that. Yeah, when you are when you are done doing that, go to your solid color. Pick something that looks like chocolate. Chocolate brown, you know. Yeah, I think somewhere around here, beautiful. So I'm going to copy the hex code in case I would need to paste again and hide, hide the solid color, make a duplicate of this. You can decide to Make a selection of your sub of your subject if your color range doesn't see it so well. But let's try. 
So once you use our common range to separate the skin tone from the dress and the background, and we are having a very nice job, except that here is not included. So I'm going to just paint into this area, just like that. And the arm over here is spilling into the background, which we do not want. So we're going to make a selection on the object. So I have the object perfectly selected, press Ctrl J to cut her out. You can delete this one, go to select, go to color range, and now you'll be able to make a selection of the skin without bothering about it spilling on the background because we are just on the skin layer. We are just on the skin layer, press OK. So it's going to create that mask. Yeah, just create your mask. It doesn't affect your background. So we just have the mask. You can use that replace the solid color delete it okay so i think we missed a step we missed this step let's trace it back and find out exactly what we did wrong so i'm going to hide every layer i'm going to hide every layer make a selection of my skin just like this i think this will work effectively for me Just like that, you can as well remove it from the hair. This works perfectly well. Right. Beautiful. We can work with this. Alright, so I'm going to create a mask for that selection. Use it and replace my sonic color. Now I can delete this. Sorry, I need to get everything open again. Now I can delete this. And now I put up my solid color. I have it on my skin. So I can take, first of all, change the blend mode to, to color or change it to soft light. Depending, if you don't have an even skin tone, then I would advise you change the color. But I think my skin tone is properly even. So I'm just going to make use of soft light and reduce the opacity. Just like that. So we are coming very much closer to our chocolate skin tone from this we were able to reduce the saturation of the skin and just added this particular uh, color, this particular solid color. You can try uh, putting color to see what that will give you. I think the soft light was adding some saturation into it, which I do not like. I think I prefer it with the color. So just paint it into the places that you think are not properly represented in the selection. Yeah, nice. All right, so I think I'm coming closer to what I like. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to my gradient mapping. Go to my legacy support because I'm using a later version of Photoshop. I will go to photograph, uh, photographic toning and pick something that looks like color you are looking for. So I think this is very much close to the look I am going for or even this. But let's stick to this just a little bit or warming to it. We can even remove the blacks if you wish press ok now i'm also copying the same mask over to this area and now i'll change the blend mode to soft light and still reduce it so you see how closer we are getting to that chocolate skin tone we are looking for beautiful so i think the highlight on her face is too much i'll pick my curls use the hand tool and just drag down the brightness on the forehead Press Ctrl I and use your brush to paint it into the face, just like that. I feel the highlights is too much. I'm going to reduce it as well. Beautiful. So the last thing I'm going to do about the coloring is to load up my photo filter and add my cooling effect. Reduce the opacity so much. Yeah, beautiful. You can decide to leave it all over the image. If you want it just on the skin, you can as well copy the mask and place it over but i think i like it on the overall image so see how much we've been able to do just by touching a few stuffs in the color grading this is the before this is the after this is the before this is the after we are already very close to the chocolate skin tone i think i need to reduce the overall brightness of the image just like that beautiful and we are good to go so the next thing i want to do now is to add some saturation to the dress and Remove the hair over here that is trailing and probably blur the background a little. And we are going to go after applying our done for you. So to do that, I'm going to create a stand visible layer. Very quickly pick up my clothes stand and just paint this out. So you notice the way I am 
sampling from different areas because I want to maintain the the whole stuff in the background the way it's flowing so it wouldn't look like I removed anything from there. And this white area here, I feel it's a bit distracting. So I'm, going, I'm just going to clone it up and hide it in. Beautiful. All right, so we'll have that properly hidden. So the next thing is to make a selection of our subject and blow out our background a little, just slightly enough to bring in or even add, this, a, add a color lookup to the background and reduce it just to give it separation from the, to give the object separation from the background. We don't necessarily need to block, block. All we need to do is just to add separation. So let me try using color lookup, see if I can achieve that separation. I want to add to my object and my background to make her stand out. This is also good, but I think it's distracted. So let's go for something that can. Mm, this is not bad. This is not bad. Okay, so I think I'm going to be sticking with this. I'm just going to reduce the bright, the sachet, the flow. I'm going to reduce the fill. Okay, I think I think I like what I'm having here. So I'm going to create a some visible layer for everything. Go to my hue and saturation, pick up my hand tool and select the blue on her dress and just pop it up a little. Take and notice it's popping my background as well, but I think it's beautiful. So just like that, I just need to pop out the blues just a little more, create one more stamp visible layer. Now we are almost done. I'm going to delete all of this. I'm going to delete all of that because our stamp visible layer contains the information of everything in the image. I'm going to flatten this up and quickly load up my actions. Of course, you know, I'm going to apply my drum for you just to bring the whole thing together and make it a little bit more flawless and beautiful. So I'm going to run my drum for you with touch action. This time around, I'm going to keep it at five so it doesn't smoothen out my textures. Press OK and allow it to do its match. Beautiful. Look at the way the drum for you have just brought in the whole highlights and shadows. But of course, this is too much. I'm going to take it down. Take and just, I just need like between 25 to 30. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, I think I'm going to use just this. And the last thing we'll do is to add sharpening to our image. I'm going to go to sharpen image and reduce it. Beautiful. So we're able to bring in details. This is before, this is after. Now we are done. I'm going to create a snapshot to show you the overall before and after. So this was the image when we came into Photoshop and this is how much we've been able to do before this. After. So this is a very, very interesting and educative step-by-step -step guide on how to retouch your outdoor images, color grade them, add details and all of that just to break things up and you will have an amazing result. Thank you for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to get notified every single time we we'll drop a new video. Until then, see you on the next one.